Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this session with Sai and Srini. They are original contributors pretty much to the Appium project. They've been with it for a long time. They were just telling me they've been contributing for seven years now. So they've been around a while. They, they know a few tricks and uh, they're enjoying playing with Appium 2 and some of the things they can do with that. Um, so today they're going to be discussing building your own Appium plugin, which is one of the, the new things that I believe you can do with Appium 2. So um, over to you guys. It's all up to you. Uh, if you want to have, just before that, <laughs> if, if people have questions, please put them in the Q&A um, and keep the chat for other things. It's just easy to find them. Um, Sign so Srini are going to answer questions as they go. Um, so we'll, we'll pick things up there. But yeah, if you can drop your questions in there, that would be great. Um, and this time, it really is over to you guys. Thank you. Let's get started. Uh, I see people coming in. Um, that's cool. And uh, I would just want to start off with thanking people joining this session. Uh, and uh, and and as a part of this Appium Conf, you know, we have a lot of talks around Appium Two plugins, drivers, uh, right ways to build stuff. So our talk is about how do you want to build a plugin. So let's get started. Uh, let me start introducing myself. Uh, I'm Sai Krishna, and I work as a lead consultant at the Works. Uh, and I've been contributing to Appium project for roughly about seven, eight years now. So, you know, including Srini. So we both were pairing together for a very long time on the project uh, at very early days. Uh, I also presented multiple international conferences, an active contributor to Appium, Java Client, Selenium, Drive.io, a lot of other open source uh, libraries. So my passion is to contribute to open source. So you learn and give it back to the community is what I believe. Uh, and uh, you can reach me on uh, Twitter and that's my Twitter handle and my uh, GitHub ID as well. So we have some cool, interesting projects as well. If you jump into one of our GitHubs, you would, you would find that. And over to you, Srini. Hi, everyone. I hope you are all safe and sound back home. Myself, uh, Srini Vasan Shekhar. I work as a lead consultant at ThoughtWorks, I'm a contributor and maintainer of Appium's Java client and contributor to various other open source repositories, including Selenium, WebDriver.io, Typo, and that's me. Cool. Today we are going to talk about why Appium 2.0 and what is Appium plugin and when do we build Appium plugins and we are going to build one now and we are going to have a live coding session and a short demo on a couple of plugins that me and Sai co have heard. Cool. Uh, and Appium 1.x architecture. Uh, as you know, Appium is a client server architecture. You write your test code on any of the client libraries which Appium supports and which internally talks to Appium server in a W3C uh, web driver standard, which internally talks to one of the driver that you wanted to talk to, which could be uh, Espresso driver or UA automated driver, which internally talks to uh, the server running, which is Espresso server running on a uh, device, which talks to Appium, I mean, application under test. That was Appium 1.x. From Appium 2.x, we are going to have another one called Appium plugins. So uh, the client libraries will talk to Appium server and Appium server will take a decision depends on what kind of commands that you are going to execute. It depends, I mean, it, uh, it takes a decision in terms of sending the request to Espresso driver or XUA driver or UA automated driver or the plugin that we have built. And the plugin can talk back to Appium driver and it can talk to Espresso server running inside your test and which internally talks to uh, which internally talks to the application under test. So we have this plugin that can be plugged into the existing, uh, I mean, the upcoming Appium 2.0 decoupled driver plugin architecture that anyone can build a plugin and plug into the existing ecosystem and make sure it works smoothly without modifying the core, uh, I mean, without modifying the core code base of Appium itself. So that's where uh, the role of plugin plays a vital role. Uh, uh, stuff in Appium 2.x architecture. So we are going to talk about what is Appium plugin and when do you want to build an Appium plugin. Yeah. So there are three situations that uh, you can build an Appium plugin. One, uh, let's say you wanted to add a new functionality altogether into the existing set of Appium commands. So let's say, uh, I mean, some of the Appium commands that have been widely supported in multiple platforms that we run are find element, 
creating a session, fitting the session, right? If you want to add more logs, let's say if you want to add more logs to the existing commands, you could do that. You just need to modify the uh, existing APM command by adding an arbitrary functionality, which could execute before finding an element, just an add a log that I'm in APM, I mean, I'm finding an element. After the, uh, I mean, after finding an element, you can add a log saying, I found an element or I don't found an element. So likewise, you could add or modify the existing commands. Uh, let's say you wanted to introduce a new command on top of the commands that Appium supports, you could do that. And uh, if you want to, uh, uh, let's say you wanted to uh, come up with a beautiful reporting, wherein uh, in a real world says you have a report portal, let's assume you have a report portal, which needs to start in its own service. I mean, it needs a as per server and it needs to start in its own service, which might be running in its, its own port number and so on. So if you want to bring in uh, those kind of services, you don't have to create it, uh, create another express server. Appium now exposes that server object itself, wherein you can hook into the Appium server and create your own endpoints, which could thus uh, probably reporting, for example. Yeah. So these are the three situations where one can build Appium plugin. One is adding a new function. Next is modifying the new function or overriding a function or probably exposing the Appium server object itself uh, which listens for certain kinds of requests yeah these are three situations where you could build an appium plugin and let's go ahead and see in a live coding session on how you could create your own plugin yeah. okay so Srini said about live coding right so this morning when me and Srini were having a chat and we we sort of she wanted to do a live coding and i said probably uh you know, it's quite dangerous to do live coding in, in conferences, in live conferences, but Srini was still sticking to live coding and uh, I was not too wait for it. So we thought, so even now I didn't say we're going to do live coding. I put the agenda as demo, Srini says it's live coding, but I also want to hear out from people uh, in this uh, uh, in this room. Uh, you know, can you simply put out in the chat saying whether you guys want to see live coding or simply record, we have a video as well recorded. So probably share some slides, talk through, and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm leaving it to you guys now to see whether you vote for Srini or to me. And, and I'm just going to give like a few minutes and I see people keying in live coding first and then we see the recordings. Okay, live coding, live coding. Okay, okay. so bunch of bunch of folks. Oh yeah, it's flowing in. Everyone says live coding, right Srini? So you win this voting, okay? Um, but before I start, or before we start, right, with live coding, I want to call this out, it's a disclaimer, because you guys chose live coding than the recording. And I was opting for recording and I'm going to do live coding and Srini is going to pair with me. So everyone here keeps saying that live coding, no issues if any problem comes up and all those bits. Okay, we'll do live coding. Uh, but starting with the disclaimer, live coding, dangerous. And now I have a lot of people to blame if something goes wrong because you guys asked for the live coding, right? So let's get jumped in to see what we can do and how we can build a plugin. Okay, and Srini, you're going to help me uh, with this uh, because you are the one who were very sticking to it, saying you want to do live coding and people in this room also want to do live coding. So let's see how this goes. Okay. Uh, sweet. Cool. So we have built, a, a, an empty project, which is a Node.js project. Why Node.js? Simple Appium server is a Node.js. So which means your plugins should also be in Node.js as simple as that. Okay. Uh, so we build a simple, uh, empty project, which says Appium conf plugin. It's got a test folder. We'll come to that. No worries. We have a SRC and we have a package.json. So. What is what is what is this package or JSON got to do here? Okay, uh, so we have certain callouts to be. Forget what's under scripts. Basically, those are something which can help us run uh, tests and bits like that. Step number one to build a plugin, you have to have a pack. You will have a package or JSON in as a part of your uh, Node project. So first thing you need to come in over here is and look for this dependencies. You need to add. Appium base plugin and support as a part of your dependencies. Okay. Step number one, keep in mind, you need to have this dependency called Appium slash base plugin and an Appium support. So that's like step number one, which is mandatory. Dev dependencies, uh, ignore that. It's basically helping us to do some sort of linting, writing our tests, some dependencies, which is required. We really don't have to talk about all of this over here. Uh, the next part is this, the Appium object. So you need to have an object uh, in your package.json. Uh, which says uh, Appium and it's going to have two attributes, which says plugin name and main class and plugin name. It could be any name, right? In our case, we want to name it conf demo. Uh, maybe 
in your case you might want to name your plugin something meaningful of what your plugin is doing in the previous plugins which me and strini built uh, we named it device farm and we named the gestures we named element weights so they so they they mean something out of it right and uh, so the plugin name figure a name and a main class and a main class could be any class name right and and, and the, the attribute itself clearly says hey it's a main class so which means conf plugin is going to be my main class name it's basically a name that's it okay uh, so these two things are quite important step number 1 i'm calling it out again apm base plugin should be in your dependencies and uh, apm uh, an object called apm which will have two attributes plugin name and main class so that's your step number 2 so step number 1 step number 2 is done so let's see what is step number 3 so you get into so we have created a a file called plugin.js and this is step number 3 okay so you come to this plugin.js i mean i mean you can name anything okay we have just named it meaningful saying plugin.js it can be a.js b.js etc etc because we have an index.js here and we are just simply exporting it out okay nothing fancy so here comes our step number 3 which is you need to create a class and the class should exactly be the same class name as we have called it out in the main class okay so we got to say export uh, default class that's my main class which extends our base plugin okay so you need to extend the base plugin uh, okay so we extended the base plugin and now we need to import the base plugin right like any other project you need something you import it so i say a uh, base plugin from uh, and that's going to be from the apm space plugin bingo simple this is your step number 3 step number 1 in your package.json you add your dependencies as apm support apm base driver a base plugin and uh, you have an apm node and this is your step number 3 which is you got to create a class uh, which is exactly the same over here which matches to this guy and uh, then you say extends base plugin that's your step number 3 okay so now we have built we have we have created the skeleton okay so we have created a a skeleton out there so let's try filling in certain bits into this now okay and uh, so strini you did mention that there are three things that the plugin can do right so uh, one updating the server object second is you can modify a given uh, existing function and third is we can write our own functions which means you can write our own endpoints and implement our own plugins right cool so where do you want to start now do you want to start with uh, modifying something or do you want to start with uh, writing something new yeah let's start with uh, modifying find element itself you want to modify find elements okay so async uh, find elements i'm going to modify this find element uh, method okay hi how do you know uh, that it's called find element why not it is find apm element internally how do you know uh, that that's a pretty good question so let's go to read me i've just kept that link out uh, probably i already have it here okay so if you go to your route right if you go to your apm base driver and you look for route.js Yes. So that's where you have all your routes. What currently Appium is holding. Okay. So now Srini said that he wants to modify find element, right? So let's see if we have something called find element. Yeah, yeah we do have. We have something called as find element. That's an endpoint, and then we have a command called find element, which takes certain parameters. So let's not worry about what the payload is, but we are more focused on that specific command, right? So we got to exactly write the function name. What you see over here as a command. Okay, so Shini, that answers your question, right? So we copy this find element, and okay. that's exactly going to be my find element over here. Okay, bingo. So we have done that. So what do you want to do with the find element, Shini? Here, let's add some logs before executing or before finding an element. Sure. Uh, so we got to add some logs. Right? It's a different ways to add a log. So you could also use console log, which is default from Node. Uh, but I want to get these logs into my Appium server as well, right? Why do you need to see the logs? from your plugin into the apm server of course because you are building the plugin and if something goes wrong you want to basically log right so you want to say that hey i am trying to perform a add uh, i have performed the add my add was successful so you basically want to tell the user saying that what sort of actions have gone in through with more information so that something fails people can give you the logs right so i don't want to use console logs because uh, apm does expose something called as logger so let's go import that uh, shini i hope that's fine with you or do yeah. you want to still stick to console logs oh makes sense makes sense right so okay so he agrees with me um okay uh, that goes good 
and uh, so we did this so let's let's just simply uh const log equals to logger dot uh, get logger so that's how you actually create an instance of the logger uh, the logger needs a name so can we say this logger has conf plugin because we are trying to build that plugin right Okay, cool. So in this case now, Srini, we say info dot log dot info, uh, and then we say we are at IPM Conf twenty twenty one. I also want to put a smiley. Uh, let's be let's all be happy. Uh, I want to put a smiling face uh, with open mouth. Okay, cool. So we did we did this. Now, do you still do you just want to find the elements you need, or you want to like you said you want to modify it, right? So, which means yeah, we want to do something. Okay, cool. So, in such a yeah, case, let's give the control back to Appium, and then I'm in. Okay, so you said you want to give the control back to Appium, uh, which means the find yeah. element has been modified, right? Where we modified that by adding a simple logger here, and then you're giving the control back to Appium. Sounds fair. So here, this find element exposes certain uh, attributes. To us, one is next. We'll talk what is next, and driver and hyphen hyphen args. Okay, so what driver means is basically it's nothing but your uh, simple driver, which is going to give you uh, uh, the entire information about uh, your driver. Uh, and the next is nothing but what we have to call now. So we simply say uh, return next. So what this next means is so the plugin is actually indicating the server saying that hey, my job is done here. I want you to do the next part of it. So that's what next means over here. So we're giving the control back to Appium server saying, go ahead and now you continue to do what you were supposed to do as a part of the, uh, you know, find, find elements. Okay. Uh, so I'm not going to print out to see what driver and uh, args have got, but do you still want to do that? Srini? Do you want to see what driver and args have got? So basically right. drivers got simply the driver information, like session ID, uh, maybe a port where your server is running and a lot bunch of information. Okay. And args are nothing but whatever arguments is sent to the find elements, like your, like your accessibility ID, you know, find, uh, strategies, accessibility ID and value could be login, blah, blah, blah. Right. So that's what is going to send there. Okay. So we have done this, right? So are we good with this? So we did a find element. We have overridden find element in line number nine. So we have modified it saying, I want to see these logs. And then we said, give it back to find, you know, give it back to the driver. Sounds good. I think this is a good start for us. So what, what, how do we test this, right? So we definitely need a test to be there. So what we have done is we've already created a simple, uh, you know, web driver test, nothing fancy, pretty straightforward. We have a simple web driver IO test. Uh, which has got some default capabilities with an app over here and some web driver IO arguments like a port number where your Selenium, where Appium is running. And uh, we're creating the session and we're trying to click on a log, uh, click on a login and we're trying to delete a session. Okay. So just to call out over here, we are not trying to get the test passed. That's why we don't have any assertions and stuff. All that we want to see is how our plugin is, uh, you know, getting merged into Appium server and how it is responding to it. So you see this, right? So driver dot dollar. So that's nothing but driver dot find element for us. So when this command is executed from the client, uh, we are expecting it to come here and it should print this out to us. Okay. So that proves that the find element is coming to our plugin and then it is going back to Appium server. Okay. So let's do that. So I'll let's add a uh, wait statement there. Uh, where do you want to write an await statement? Uh, line oh, number 10. Line. Bring it back to next. Uh, oh, you do you want to do it here? Plugin, plugin.js. Wait, 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 wait. Plugin.js. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to do here? And plugin.js on line number 10. Let's wait for the finding element to happen. Await next. Ah, right. That's a good catch. Yeah. Await next. Good. And Sini, why did you put an await? Cool. So we are, uh, we also have to wait until the actual Appian driver to find that element, which is the Perfect. UI automated tool server, which is mm -hmm. going to find that element and gives us the response force. So we have to wait for it. Sounds fair. I mean, I agree to that point. Cool. So we, we built, we, we got all the, you know, building blocks. So we put the Legos together. So we have something of a find element, right? How do we test this? So we have a test as well. 
but we know we should also install the plugin first, right? So how do we want to install the plugin? So before we install the plugin, I'm just going to first uninstall it just to make sure that I don't have the same plugin uh, installed in my uh, machine. So it says Appium plugin uninstalled conf demo. Ha, that's an interesting part, right? So what is this conf demo? So that's exactly the same name what we specified in package.json. Okay, which is which is here. So go back to package.json. That's exactly the same guy. So that plugin name, what you see here is exactly the same what is displayed over there. Okay, cool. So we, we uninstalled it. So I want to make sure I install it back, right? So if I have to uh, install it back, so I got to say up here. Plugin, plugin yeah. install and the source as local iPhone, iPhone source local and the location where we have it, probably PWD. And uh, Srini, why did you say uh, local? Uh, are there different sources that we could actually install this as well? Yeah. So since we are uh, developing it here, we could install it from our local code base. And if we have released it to NPM, probably people can use source equal to NPM and, and specify the name of the registry where they wanted to download it from. Okay. Sounds fair. Okay. Um, cool. So we right now, because we're developing it locally, we have not published it anywhere. We want to basically test it out. Right. Okay. Looks good. So this clearly says that the plugin conf demo 1.0 is successfully installed. Okay. So we have installed the plugin. Now we need to activate the plugin. So the way for us to activate the plugin is when you start your Appium server, we basically, uh, call the activate, uh, so you, you'll be basically call the, this guy. Okay. What basically yeah. this is doing now over here is, which simply says Appium server, uh, some command line arguments. Let's not talk about that. Uh, this is important for you to observe uh, where uh, we say a uh, plugin conf hyphen demo. So that conf hyphen demo is your plugin name and you say hyphen hyphen plugin. Okay. So that's the way you activate it. Uh, if a question is asked, can we activate multiple plugins? Yes. You just simply give it a comma separated and it's going to do that for you. Okay. Interesting. So now things to note over here, right? Uh, so we have plugins. So it clearly says it's a conf demo because you, of course, we activated only one plugin. And the next thing to look out for is your available plugins. And it clearly says conf hyphen demo is active. And if you see, I also have other plugins available, like a gestures demo, a device farm, but they are not active because uh, when we, when we ran the server, we haven't specified the other uh, available plugins with a comma separation. So here, right now we are only loading this guy. Sounds good. So let's simply go and run NPM test. Uh, and I actually have two emulators open uh, for another reason. So, but right now that's fine. All that we want to be very concerned is to see how the uh, server logs are displayed to us. So you see it has started to create a, a, a session to us now. So we'll, we'll just uh, wait here. Okay. So that's fine. We're not worried about whether it's uh, failing, just is passing failing, but we are more worried about the logs, right? Uh, okay. So he, over here, you see that, so we have the plugin, which can handle this is, this is the important part, right? So I'm going to turn this off. So you, it very clearly says that the plugin, which can handle the command find elements conf demo. And these are the stuffs we are in plugin, find elements, driver info arguments and stuff like that. And you see this very clearly says we are in the plugin, find elements with a smiley, right? So that means the control has actually come to uh, this piece of code over here, uh, which is uh, this. So we are in Appium conf 2021 uh, and, and, and it's pretty, and it's come here and we have done the find element. And that's what even the, the logs, uh, are uh, stating over here, which is uh, where the logs are. The logs are this, and uh, and very clearly says the plugin which can handle this. And also, if you see uh, at at some point, it will clearly state that uh, to, 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 that's a different one. Okay, that's fair enough. So that's 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 a log what we were looking for. And you and see, when we put the logger, this is why we put the logger for. It says. Uh, uh, you know, it's config gen and, 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 and those kind of stuff. Okay. I, uh, I think we have to rebuild our code. Did we build it? Mm, ah, did I build it? I think no. Yeah. That's a good catch. Probably it's taking from my, uh, old, uh, cache. Yeah. Yeah. 
Cool. So I'm going to quickly build that. I'm going to uh, uninstall uh, what was there already. I mean, I, for this, we already have a, a helper where we put in things together inside our package.json. So I'm simply going to use that. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it just does all that uh, bunch of stuff together. That's all. As simple as that. Nothing, nothing fancy. So we're going to do that. So it's going to uninstall, uh, install it, and, uh, and, and start the Appium server. If I've shut the Appium server in the right manner. Perfect. Let's cool. cool. Oh, okay. So now I'm going to run the test pack again. Ah, uh, no, I haven't killed my Appium port correctly. This is what happens with this terminal. That's fine. I'm going to split it vertically. Uh, another one. That's good. So that's going to be our test this time. So that's going to be our uh, build. So I'm simply going to run my command back again, which is nothing about this. And uh, am I in the right route? Yeah, we are there. So we could simply do an NPM test once this is completed. Okay, that sounds good. I'm quickly having a time check as well. Uh, that's good. So we'll do, it yeah. clearly says it's active. So I'm gonna open one of the emulators, uh, not this guy, so, probably this other one. Since it's running in background, meanwhile, I will take up a question from Vidya Sagar. So mm -hmm. do we need to install the plugin each time we restart the Appium server? So uh, whenever we make some changes in our source code, we have to actually uh, rebuild our plugin and then probably we also have to reinstall the plugin and Jonathan was coming up with another hot reload option for driver probably we will soon that we will see that soon in for plugins as well so you don't have to rebuild every time and then restart your appium server yeah cool so you see uh, now I had to now it's fine so you see the find element thingy, it clearly says the plugins which can handle the find element conf demo is this. And we see it clearly returns that we are at an Appium conf 2021 with a smiley, right? So that's the written statement. Uh, we simply printed that. And then the control goes back to, you know, the default uh, find element with a strategy, uh, which we have given because we have given it to the next and next can also take it forward to the next uh, clicks and, and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So that's about uh, one part which Srini uh, spoke to us. So we have done that. So we modified the find element. Uh, and uh, we straight away uh, printed something and, and we gave it, we gave the control back to Appium as well, right? So Srini, there was another one which you called out Srini uh, in the slide. So yeah. you did say that we can write something which does not exist in Appium's base driver, right? Or something yeah. what is currently not there. Uh, yes. So so let's see what, how to do that, right? Uh, so let's get a static uh, new method map. And what do I have to add here, Srini, with the method map? So uh, where do I... Add the... Uh, uh... Appium command that we wanted to create, whether it is of HTTP method, get post, endpoint, detail, yeah. and so on. Sounds so. good. So see, I simply copied something from the route. So I said it's a get, and what's the command? Let's say that uh, get uh, conf details. So that's the that's the command, and I'm going to simply say plugin uh, slash uh, conf uh, slash uh, get details or probably just say details. Okay. No, nothing much to do there. Okay. So we have done this part now. Uh, so now I need to create a function to get some implementation out there. Right. So you simply say, uh, async put this function. So whenever this call is being done from the client, when it comes to the server, this will get triggered and it comes over here. So here, uh, we should be, let's say that let's print, uh, Seeing I, uh, before we get there, there is another question from Ashwin asking, "What is this new method map?" So if you look at uh, remote, I mean the router JS, which I was showing in base driver, which consists of a lot of methods that Appium currently supports. It has a definition, whereas the implementation resides in each platform specific driver. If you are going to the top, you could see something called method map. So what we are trying to do in our plugin is we are trying to add a new method and add the additional method into this existing method map in base driver. Yeah. 
I also see Jalips adding more points there. Thanks, Jalips. Uh, okay, so coming back to this, so we just did that, right? But there's a problem here because when we look back at the architectures, the way Srini said, right? So when anything comes to the Appium server, uh, when which comes to the new method maps, because this gets this is going to get merged into our routes.js. Uh, so which means either it has to get into uh, UI automated too, or it has to get inside uh, XUI driver or any driver, right? Let that be. But none of the drivers understand this specific endpoint because we are the ones who created that endpoint, which is plugin conf details, right? So if a, if a request has been made to any one of these drivers, like UI automated to XEUI or uh, if, any driver, any driver which is existing today in the world for Appium, they don't understand this. So because we are the ones who's responsible to handle this uh, request, process the response out, right? So we are saying if a client is saying that, hey, give me uh, give me details about this, we have to respond to this because. Uh, sending this command to UI Automator or uh, XUI, any driver, it doesn't make sense. So how do we stop that, right? So we have another function, which is exposed, which says should avoid a uh, proxy. Okay. And that gives us uh, three arguments, method, route, and body. Method is simple, whether it's a get post, delete, blah, blah, blah. And route is nothing but the URL, the, the entire URL. And body is if it's a post, it gives you the params. Okay. So I already had something here to just to do it uh, in a regex way. So this should avoid proxy. The the way the function itself is termed is is looking for a written type as a boolean. So I simply say this of test of route. So what we are simply what are we trying to do over here? We are simply saying if a request is being made, uh, you know, which matches this regex, which is plugin slash conf, which is this guy plugin slash conf, then simply return a true. As simple as that. Nothing 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 really fancy. Nothing very difficult. Over here. So once this returns a true, so now the plugin is telling the Appium server that, hey, you know what? I'm telling, I'm instructing you, do not proxy this to UI Automator or you any other driver because they do not know this. I am the owner of this and I own it and I know what to do with it. So by sending this Boolean back to Appium server, Appium server does not proxy that and rather it lets the plugin to decide what it has to do over here. Okay. So uh, that's the that's the console log. Instead of console logging. Let's say we want to return this, right? Because of course, if it's a test, we want we want the test to get this value out for us. So, uh, so we definitely need a, a, a return uh, over here. Cool. So now that's done. So the implementation is all done. But how do we get this out as a part of our uh, client, right? So as we are going to do with the client part. So that's the client. So we have a click and stuff. So how do we do this with the client? So the client has to send that. So we already so, have. Uh, let's add a new command that we have created uh, in our client code base. So we have click and delete session. Probably we can uh, add a new command with the details of uh, whether it's a method, get, post, and what's the endpoint that we have exposed on server side. So uh, back to WebDriver IO now. So we have they have exposed an add command function here wherein you could specify the name of the command and the details specific to the command with its description and required parameters as well. In case of ours, the parameter is an empty, which we haven't decide, defined anything. So we could uh, add this command, which will eventually register the command that we have created in server back to the uh, new method, I mean, back to the method map that we have all of those defined. And we could call the command uh, using driver dot get conference details in our client wherein uh, that actually calls this specific endpoint in server and gives us back the conference details. Cool. So with that said, so Srini, once we run this, so which means this get conf details is going to get the response all the way from the plugin, right? So which yes. means we have to see uh, something getting printed in our test terminal, not in our Appium logs. Keep that in yeah. mind because we are not logging anything like we did with find elements, but rather we are returning a value to the client. So the client is getting the values out to the uh, server. So let's do that, right? So that's a test. Our server is still running, uh, but we need to make, I need to kill this off uh, and uh, rebuild the server, right? Uh, to, 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 so I'm going to do that. So I'm simply going to run npm build and, uh, and also call the installer. That's a plugin installer. Yep. That's going to do a bunch of things, which we already spoke. Uh, it's going to remove the existing stuff. So we don't have to do all this like Stini said. So I'm going to, and also I'm going to keep my uh, test ready here. Linking is doing, and then the server is getting started up. Fantastic. Hello.
Okay, so we get that. I don't know which emulator is taking, so I rather open both. <laughs> Uh, either it is the white one. Uh, I don't know which of order it's taking. Uh, I'm just keeping it up so that we know that the the app's getting launched and things like that. Ah, uh, that's the black one. Okay, cool. So the app did launch there. Okay. Trying to interact with server. It's finding the element. Ta-da! You see that? So conference details. We are in the session build plugins. Where is that coming from? So this is not there anywhere in the client. The client test simply says driver dot get conf details, uh, right, Srini? Yeah, and, and we this... are printing that detail back. Perfect. And even you could see this message in our appium server, uh, in our response actually. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So this kind of gives the control back to client and the information that client needs to assert, and you could do that. Eventually, and if you notice this as not like a find element where you move the control back to the Appium UI automator to server where it finds the element after you printed the log here. In this case, basically it kinds of uh, gives, I mean, plugin kinds of talk to Espresso server, I mean, UI automator to server in this case, and gives that control back to our uh, client with the status code 200 and the information we are in session build plugins. Yeah. And you see the one which I've highlighted, it clearly says that, you know, the plugin conf details would normally be proxy. So would normally be proxy means what Srini said, but the plugin conf demo wants to handle it internally. So we will avoid proxying it in this case. So it clearly said that, you know, it's the plugins responsibility now and the plugin will take care of uh, all the, all the stuff, what you want to do. Okay. So this way, uh, you know, you can modify, uh, your plugin. Uh, and also you can uh, write new entry points uh, into the plugin and, and you can do a bunch of stuff. So you don't have to de depend on Appium score module. You could completely decouple things uh, and, and, and do a lot of stuff in this. So with, with this said, right, uh, you know, when, when Jonathan came up with this idea of plugins and stuff, so there was one pressing issue, which was always bothering the community. And of course, me and Srini being Appium users for quite some time, it was definitely uh, something what we have also seen is definitely parallel testing, right? So when it comes to parallel testing on devices, emulators, or wherever that could be, uh, it was always that you'll have to keep you'll have to handle a lot of things at the client side, because that means the client should be driver safe. The client should know, or what is the, you know, UDID that we need to send. They have a bunch of other attributes to keep in mind, like unique port numbers, a device should free. There's a lot, right? So, I mean, with Appium 2.x, uh, with the plugin architecture, uh, I mean, that was really cool for us. You know, we thought of this idea of solving the problem so that no changes on the client side, no heavy lifting. So today, if you have a test in your client, which runs in one device, you simply execute a plugin, which we built, you activate the plugin, which we built, and the plugin is going to take care of all of that. If you have like five test cases and all that, I probably is going to do that. Srini is going to talk through all that to like make the environment pretty um, with the emulators and tests and bits like that. So we will show you the demo. Uh, yeah. We can switch back to our slides uh yeah you want yeah, the slides there are a bunch of, uh, no it's fine uh, we, yeah. we have a bunch of uh, uh, uh plugins that we have co-authored one of that is device form uh, as i said it's going to help us build uh it's going to help us run our tests in parallel wherein it takes care of uh, assigning the unique ports in case if you are running some tests in parallel on android using ui automator tool you have to give a unique port called system port wherein it could communicate to your espresso server running in your device so finding your devices that are connected in your mac host or windows host be it android or ios it kinds of takes the devices into its own pool and it maintains what is the state of a device initially the state of device is actually uh, free because we are not running any tests in these two android emulators that we have we are gonna uh, it takes the state and maintains the state in path i mean it, Going to maintain the state and uh, assigns the device whenever we get requests. Let's assume we have two devices here and we are going to run three tests in parallel or four tests in parallel. So two devices can go in for two tests and the remaining two requests will have to wait. So we are making a queue inside our plugin called device form, wherein this queue uh, will take, uh, will keep on polling whether any device gets freed after one of its execution. So if a device gets freed, 
then the device that I mean the device will get assigned to one of the requests in the queue, and it takes care of uh, assigning the remaining request as and when the device has got free. So it also comes up with a handy uh, UI, uh, which is uh, uh, kind of a glossy UI that we developed using Glassmorphism CSS, wherein it gives you or lists you all the number of devices we have, and uh, which includes Android, iOS, platform specific, I mean, platform specific device, you could see that here. We have Android devices, both of those devices are currently running. And if one of the device execution is over, then it will actually make it free and it kinds of assigns the remaining stress back to our, uh, back to this. So you could see there is, uh, uh, there are two drivers, I mean, there are two tests that got executed and uh, both of these are running in parallel. There are other tests that are running as well, but those doesn't have a free device. Till it gets free, then it will be waiting for it to become free. And all of those are internally handled by the plugin uh, device form itself. And you see there are a list of simulators that Sai has installed and currently is not running anything on simulators. So these two devices are actually busy and it lists down whether it is the uh, actual, uh, probably it's an emulator state, I mean, emulator or a real device as well. And uh, it kind of gives more information as well in terms of what kind of battery state, all of those, which is something in our backlog that is something that we haven't released yet, kind of gives the battery percentage of device, CPU percentage of the device or real devices that we have. So it uh, maintains the queue state and then assigns the device that are free and uh, it does everything. And all you need to do is just initialize the plugin and we are good to go. So and Srini, you got five minutes left. Cool, thanks. Uh, yeah, and uh, I would I would say people to go check out the device farm and other plugins what we have. Uh, probably you could give it a shot and give feedback so that we could make it better. Uh, but this is it's something like, which uh, is yeah. Yeah, as like Appium two point zero is in beta, we are also in beta, and feel free to try that out and give us feedback so we could uh, uh, basically improve the plugin. And uh, back to community. And again, uh, plugin is already open sourced. Feel free to have a look at it. Cool. Uh, and all of these, uh, I mean, the plugins can also have certain configurations. If you wanted to run on your iPhone, you could run it on your iPhone. Though you have other Android devices uh, up and running. Uh, if you wanted to uh, target only on iPhone, or if you wanted to target only on iPad simulators, for example, you could do that as well as for the plugin. And we were doing this uh, previously as well using a client side. I mean, we have a Maven project called Appium Test Distribution, but all of those are translated back to our Appium plugin, which is very cool. So any, uh, uh, for example, we have demonstrated now this with WebDriver IO. We could do this on any clients for that matter. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> and I also see most of the questions answered by Jonathan. Thanks a lot, Jonathan, for sticking around that later and helping us answering those questions at the chat. Uh, I, I randomly see one question, some Deepika has asked like parallel execution between iOS and Android at the same time works the same. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, we could execute uh, both iOS and Android at the same time and the text can get queued and get distributed. But uh, th there are certain things like certain flags that we can also set where you could uh, configure saying that, hey, uh, right now I only do my, my cloud has got both iOS and Android, uh, but I just want to run on iOS. So you could also configure that based on uh, you know, uh, arguments which can be sent through the plugin saying that it's only Android only, iOS only, iPad only, or both and stuff like that. So there are a bunch of these configurations uh, that can also be done. Um, and the dashboard's also getting improvised uh, where we are also coming up with uh, to show the test cases which is running in your real devices or emulators onto the browser, like more like mirroring them uh, so that when you click on a specific device card, uh, it can also bring up your device screen to say, what test is currently running um, uh, and also uh, give you more on informations like, okay, this specific device ran these, these test cases. So these kind of more stuff we have in, in, in backlog to make this plugging more uh, useful to the community. Uh, with that said, uh, probably we can quickly jump into, uh, I'm going to run through very, very fast on the summary. So we did create new routes. We overrided the modifying existing uh, Appium commands. So we created a new endpoint called uh, get config, uh, get conf details. And we, that's a new route and we modified the find elements there. Step number one, keep in mind uh, in your package.json, you need to have a dependency under dependencies, you say Appium based plugin. And then under, and, and the second is uh, keep an Appium node with your plugin name and main class. And step number two, uh, very simple, you create a 
you create a class called as exactly the same what you mentioned in the main class, which extends a base plugin. And uh, and then you override what you want to do there. Uh, and by adding routes, new static map. So whatever you add inside new static map simply gets merged into uh, appm's uh, route.js. Uh, and any call from the client, like you say, driver.get fake data, uh, any, any call from the client simply comes in and because this route is already managed and mapped into route.js and we have also told appm that hey uh, do not proxy to any of the upstream drivers because it's a plugin's responsibility so that was taken care and then the get fake session data is executed and whatever you return gets returned to the client uh, and we did see how we can uh, install and activate these uh, plugins there are multiple ways that you could do uh, appm pro has got a good uh, good stuff and me and strini have also put down certain articles with uh, appli tools featuring with appli tools take a look at those blogs which can give you more details about how you want to install and a bunch of other different ways that you want to uh, install these uh, plugins and uh, some of the plugins that uh, we have right now which we found out uh, was these some are maintained by uh, appm devs officially an appm wait plugin device farm gestures are something what me and Srini have featured at the very early days keeping up some ideas of how you can build a framework uh, or, or a plugin uh, so and they all have links so when when the slides have been shared with you you will definitely get to click on these links to go through uh, and on time uh, thank you so much for uh, sticking around Thank, thank you guys for joining us and thanks Jonathan. Thank you. Thanks Jonathan. Yeah. And Masai and Shreedy, thank you so much for sharing your your knowledge and expertise and helping people get started to, to build a driver.